Hey, Jake. How you doing? Hey, Kurt. How's it going? I'm excited to get into this commandy number 17. Yeah, looks like we're going down a gopher hole. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's some gophers here that are... Um, they're uh they have steel claws. Oh boy. Here on this cover and the gorillas are sending Commandy down. Looks like they're feeding him to the gophers. They're gonna I've been a good I've been very, very good. I have not flipped to see the next pages uh every time we stop where we're at because I do want it to be as fresh because I've read all the commandies just as you have, but it's been years. But I want that that sort of uh, surprise that that little bit of that little bit of surprise, and then this cover really, um, you know, brings it on. It's just uh, this mention of uh, gophers, um, and then there's these hands with these these silver claws, metal claws on them, and Commandy's getting lowered down by the apes. It's it's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting how dark the the background is because you know I'm you know sometimes they didn't really have perfect control you know they were looking at like maybe like a brighter green and uh you know they were they're having to um you know combine tints so that they so that they end up on a printed page um you know maybe a little bit darker um you know there's a little bit of of uh, black and white line work here in the rocks that you can hardly see yeah um i know the whole top is just a dark blue and the dark blue kind of eats up the black outlines of the commandy letters too. So, really weird uh, art art um, production uh, here. I'm I'm wondering if this came out as as planned. Um, but you know, you can definitely see the uh, you know the central action and the uh, the little teaser up top. The apes found a way to get rid of the gophers. They used people. So uh, now maybe that's interesting. A, an ape gopher war, and uh, they just <laughs> bit of fed them like something. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. So, turning the page. All right. We uh, we're we're right in the middle of the Battle of Washington D.C. Yeah. What's going on right here? Not between politicians, protesters, or police. Their world is gone, wiped out by a natural disaster of terrible magnitude. But in the ruins of Washington, D.C., the battle is on between apes and tigers and one lone human being, Kamenki, the last boy on Earth. Um, so here we see, um, you know, there's, there's considerable amount of blank sp uh, space in this uh, comic, which, you know, Kirby wasn't afraid to, to you know, to, to let it have happen. It gives you kind of like an open, open quality, you know, like an open sky quality, but... Um, some nice Kirby dots there in the smoke and the flames. Um, I'll teach you apes to call me an animal. This is how a man fights. And where did he come from? Stop him. So Commandy's now fighting the apes, I guess, on the side of the tigers, if we go back to uh, previous stories. And uh, he's got a gun. The other guys have a gun. But instead of shooting each other, they're, they're locking uh, hand to hand, hand combat. Combat. Yeah. Um, next we get a double page spread. Ooh. Uh, it's kind of a close up on, uh, That's extreme struggling. Yeah. Um, you know, this is kind of like just one big panel. That's just gigantic. Yeah. Um, you know, usually the, his double page spreads have some kind of landscape setting, you know, they really set the scene and give you a lot of detail about, um, you know, the, the, the the other characters and a lot of detail. Um, here we we're noticing that Mike Royer's gone. I was just going to mention that. So you got D. Bruce Barry. I did a look up on him, and it's only Commandy that he works on. Really? Yeah, I didn't find that he was connected to any other projects, at least by uh, you know uh, being named for that. It doesn't mean that he couldn't have been uh, ghosting, you know, for Mike Royer's. Right. Uh, and uh, and who knows if it's even a real name, right? D. Bruce Berry. What is that? Yeah, mean? maybe it's uh, um, Roz. Could be, right? Well, could be, <laughs> or some <laughs> some some kid, or some, I don't, you know. If you don't knows? if you don't see a bio on them, then that's kind of that's kind of sketchy. Yeah, yeah, not a lot about this. D. Bruce Berry would love to know more. 
if you do have information to share, please put it in the comments. Yeah, so uh, Commandy's being taken down. He's uh, they're tying up his legs. They're sticking him with poles. Uh, there's multiple guys on him. That and uh, don't shoot him. Our supply unit's been rounding up animals. We can use him. And uh, that's already uh, kind of hinting at where we might be going. So Commandy falls into the hands of the gorillas. He's bound in trust to carry it off like a wild beast. There's an animal supply truck leaving. You see that he's on it. I th I still think it would be simpler to shoot him. In you go, Scrapper, and bon voyage. Shut that door. We're pulling out. Inside the truck, Commandy finds himself among others of his kind, also bound and helpless. Grah! Then the sound of an engine shakes the truck. We're moving, but where? Rum. Take them away. They'll be a lot more useful to the Pioneer Corps. So now we're going uh, on a journey somewhere. Here we see um, Kirby is framing up the uh, the scene with some brush and some trees. Some weird roots. Some real old like growth some tree root. roots. Yeah. Check out this this this. Um, I guess these are rocks back here back here, but they look like moon rocks like a basalt yeah something. really wild the human gophers of ohio right maybe this is supposed to be some kind of like ohio dirt mound or something yeah and then the 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 sort of connecting maybe these two forms with just that gray color well the uh the paragraph above talks about mutated vegetation and uh, that the apes come and go unseen. They move their supplies under the protective shadow of sites never imagined in bygone ages. But even stranger sites await the travelers, the human gophers of Ohio. The human go gophers? That's weird. So, uh, next page, story page six. To survive the great disaster, plants as well as animals have been forced into forms far removed from their early beginnings. Look out, that thing can swallow us. Don't get in a sweat. The electric cables across the top will stop it. Uh, looks like some kind of giant Venus flytrap type thing. West Virginia is slashed by great chasms which strip mining began. The great disaster has finished. I hate this part of the route. These canyons are unstable. Every bump we cross can set off an avalanche of rocks. And the gorilla philosophically says, ah, shut up. What do you want to do? Live forever? <laughs> Listen, do you hear that rumble, that cracking sound? I hear it. Pour on the fuel or we'll be smashed flat. Cr crack. Don't bug me. I'm giving it all there is. And then crack. We made it. Keep going. Suddenly the road starts to crumble. The falling tons of rock have cracked open still another chasm. The ground's caving in. Yeah, we're stuck. We'll fall into that pit grind the churning wheels finally get traction and the truck pulls away i guess they're pulling out of it that's a little unclear inside the vehicle the human cargo is beset by hysteria yag what's happening here it felt like an earthquake all this bumping had shifted the entire cargo that shovel Commandy rolls his body so that it can clumsily grip the toppling shovel. Got it. Then, after maneuvering himself into the desired position, Commandy scrapes his bonds across the metal shovel head. It's happening. The rope is coming apart. I've done it. I'm free. Uh, Commandy proceeds to free the others. Hold still, blast you. You could have freed yourself if you used your brains. Ark, Ark, let me go, you jumpy dum-dum. I'm trying to finish this job. Um, yeah, so here, you know, Kirby is really getting into the, the foreground action and he really is neglecting uh, the backgrounds. You see it up top in the first two panels, you know, with some interesting color choices there too, but then it kind of goes away and now, you know, it's confusing. It looks like they're in a room with a wall, you know, it wouldn't be so hard just to draw, you know, the, the boxed in surroundings that they're in this small you know, vehicle cargo hold. But, um, you know, that's what happens when you're, when you're blasting through uh, three titles a month. 
Uh, story page nine. At that moment, the apes stopped the vehicle. What's that commotion back there? It's the animals. The landslide must have spooked them. Blump, blump, blump. Be careful when you go in. They can bite right through your gloves. Listen to that thumping. They've gone mad in there. The doors are opened and big mistake. And we see the uh, humans are uh, jumping out uh, like crazy. I'm seeing some. I'm seeing some awkward inking some places. You know, this last page on this page. Um, you know. Yeah, it's like is the D. Bruce Barry. Uh, is he? Um, you know, obviously replicating uh, the style of Mike Royer's, but working directly off of uh, Jack Kirby. So Kirby's got to be giving just enough of this information so you know going back to these these panels that have nothing in the background kirby might just have been relying on on royers to just fill it in to give some graphic delineation of you know setting and stuff but this uh d d bruce barry is not uh not that savvy well now it would be really interesting when i was in the forbidden planet comic store in manhattan um they did have this treasury edition and it was shrink wrapped and it was all the black and white pages of commandy. And it was like, you know, how much? Yeah. 125, 150, whatever. But they were, I'll split it with you. They were also like, you know, jumbo size and they were up on the high shelf. So I just felt like (laughs) totally like childlike in every way. I didn't have the money and it was shrink wrapped and, you know, uh, and it was too high for your reach. <laughs> yeah, but but there they were, and I think it was only a couple of, of issues, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with like three. Yeah, those um artist editions are great. Uh, a friend of mine years ago gave me uh Frank Miller's Ronin, um, which is my favorite um Frank Miller mainstream comic, if you will. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And uh, it is absolutely to die for if i have like a weak moment in my uh uh working you know just i don't want to say like well yeah maybe just not as enthusiastic or need a little bit of a jump uh, yeah you know, uh, i will go downstairs in the basement pull this thing out put it on the table and turn on the uh, lamp and uh just flip through it for about 15 minutes and then close it and run upstairs to the studio and right and just, you're re-energized. it speaks to me yeah. yeah it speaks to me on every level well you know uh, it always has to it, it would just answer so many questions you know what what uh you know what was sent to the inker and then uh and then we see what the inker you know came up with like you know i feel like when i do my uh I have my Pearl White Malady series where I do like, you know, tight adult pencils and then I give it to these amateur kids to ink or some of them are just inking for the first time, you know. I love it though. I mean, what pages you've shown me, I love it. I I think it's a great combo. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting result, uh, unpredictable and interesting result. But um, But that's what I think is, I think is the, the really interesting dynamic is that you're predictable as an adult drawing out a comic. You're trying to do your best. You're trying to tell a story. You're doing all the things that you understand that is. And then you give it to a very, very young person who goes, oh, wow, let me color this in with blue. Right. <laughs> or brown. And then that blue is on something where you're like, uh, that should probably be more like a red or a rose color. But that's interesting. You know, I mean, I even like I said, I when you first showed them to me, um, you know, Outsider art was one part of it. The other part of it was like a um, like a Basquiat kind of approach, right? Uh, where Basquiat and um, uh, Andy Warhol had worked together, and it was just Warhol had screen printed like uh, logos of major corporations, like oil companies and gas companies, right? And then Basquiat would come in and color some of it, and then just start making drawings of things and stuff. Uh, mm, yeah, delicious. Well, Delicious. Jean, Jean-Michel Basquiat ended up uh, breaking all records for an American artist at $110 million for a painting. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, yep. um, Deserves every penny of it. So these guys all jump out. How in blazes did they break loose from their ropes? Beats me. Looks like we've lost a lot of them. 
Not all of them. Look. Yeah, it seems this one was knocked down in the rush. Well, one is better than none. Come here, Bonzo. <laughs> Do oh. you have like a very white mouth open in the ape on, on the left here? Um, no. It's like it, it's yours. like his teeth are there, but they're colored gray. Okay, mine's white, so there seems to be a little. Yeah, that's weird. It's not here. It's just uh, the same gray as the rest of the face, and uh, you can see it's kind of his teeth. And uh, it's funny they call him Bonzo. That was the name of the monkey in the in the Ronald Reagan movie. I'll <laughs> I'll belt him one to see that he stays under control. Commanding is struck a sharp blow. Pow. Meanwhile, back at the scene of battle in the ruins of Washington, D.C., I suggest that we pull back Prince Tufton. We're only a small raiding force against an army of apes. And you, Dr. Canis, what's your advice? Canis? Canis? Uh, I'm a scientist, not a military strategist. You've done all you can to find Commandy. I suppose the poor animal's beyond all help now. Fate is not always kind. Let's hope he met his end with little pain. Captain, we'll risk no more of Great Caesar's tigers. Disengage from the enemy. We're leaving. Prince Tufton is wise. So they were still they were looking for for Commander. That was the reason they engaged the guerrillas. And now we're all all the way in chapter three. So we have five pages and five pages. Commandy may not be in the best of straits, but he's very much alive. His destiny is now on wheels which rumble through territory where rich history was snuffed out by cataclysm. The Midwest is a vast, silent, ghost-like ruin. There are names still legible on plaques and markers. They mean nothing in Commandy's world. Now you see it, now you don't. We're arriving in Vanishville. And, uh, yeah, this is, again, a little, a, the, the inking is a little bit amateurish, I think, a little clunky compared to what we've been seeing um well there's no rising and falling it's just all pretty much same weight in li in line so there's very little delineation other than when you're you know uh you know blacking in you know from here but there's yeah yeah but those, look at the much. look at the trees on the top i mean it you know this might be a clue into like what Kirby was giving Royer and Royer yes. and okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything sloppy or scratchy here I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna design it um and but yeah I bet you this is an, a direct ink tracing yes yeah, some of these lines look a little bit different look look a little bit weird so um we're almost at the pioneer camp I know what you mean there's been strange. I hope it's still there. I know what you mean. There's been strange talk about disappearances. We're in Mound City, Ohio. And I think uh, we're cross, you know, there's some, some ruins here, but trees are growing at least. Um, I have a double page spread here for Walt Disney's Haunted Mansion and the the uh, mummy that jumps out of the piano. The uh, the crypt keeper that smacks the, uh, smacks the guy with a shovel. <laughs> these limited motion toys that you build um story page 12 later at the eighth pioneer camp sergeant ugash here comes the supply truck good deal we can use the animals they've brought yes they can carry these baskets of explosive goodies um i wonder if the name ugash comes uh from planet of the apes that you had uh Ursus and Urko, everything was starting with a U, yeah, right? Yeah, good call. Yep. Uh, gifts from us to the gopher creeps. Death on delivery. Here comes the supply unit. I'm Sergeant Ugash. Where are the rest of the animals? Sheesh, where's the rest of your camp? It's down here in these holes. Every time we find a new hole, we discover a new theft of our supplies. I see you're trying to flush out the thieves. Does it work? If the water doesn't drive the thieves out of their holes, maybe it'll drown them. No such luck. The gopher creeps are smart. They block off the tunnels so the water can't reach them. What? Unnoticed by his captors, Commandy becomes aware of a strange digging sound behind him. He turns. Uh-oh. There's another hole in the making. A small mound of loose earth begins to form. The digger beneath is furiously active. 
then something breaks to the surface. It's a hand, a human hand. The hand is joined by another. Commandy is about to witness a theft of the ape supplies. Almost savage in their swiftness, the hand sees a, part, a large green sack and yank it toward the mound opening. Then, that sack is being pulled into the ground. It's another theft. Stop, the, stop him. So I'm really interested that they call it human hands. You know, the human gophers. This, that's, that's really weird because you would think that these are just, you know, anthropomorphs. Uh, page 14, there is an angry concerted rush to the mound. Fire into that opening. Nail that gopher creep. Gopher creep is again, always in quotes. Their guns failed. Now they're using flamethrowers. Okay, knock it off. Those gopher creeps have probably blocked off the fire. What next, Sarge? Him. We're going to send him down among the gopher creeps with a gift basket. I get the idea. It's very good. Tie that basket to the animal's back. Hold still, you. Ugh. <laughs> the greedy devils won't expect this. So, so just uh, just to bring up, uh, like th this probably should have just been all black underneath his visor. But D. Bruce Barry probably had no indication from Kirby to fill it in. So it got filled in by color. Um, yeah. And then uh, um, something else. I had it saw. looks like a shadow. It was kind of similar. Yeah, I mean the same thing here. It's this weird double line, the brim of the hat, and then this what should have been filled in as a black shape of a shadow over underneath, and then the face. So yeah, we're definitely looking at somebody who's um, filling in for Mike Royer's duties, but is just tracing. Um, uh, Kirby's pencils, so and and doesn't have the direction of hey fill this in. Right. Um, so it is pretty. In this is a really really interesting uh, um, issue. Yeah, it's a change, um, a, a little change in vid visuals, subtle, subtle change. Yeah, but for us getting into better uh, better understanding for process, I think it's 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 kind of a a, a jewel in the rough. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm you I'm, know I'm dying. I'm not critical of it. I'm just noticing you know, uh, to be able to see commandy pencils, you know, and what then gets uh, pushed over to the anchor. So commandy is bound to the basket. He's pushed to a nearby mound opening. If the gopher creeps can't fail to snatch that basket, they'll grab anything. We're counting on that. Get going, animal. Go down there. I'm going, you blockheads, but because this may be my chance to escape. If I'm guessing right, there must be a network of tunnels below and perhaps another way out. As Commandy goes deeper, his path grows narrow and steep until at the end of a long, dark passage, I've hit a dead end. This tunnel is sealed off. Wait, I hear something. Uh, that's a great uh, panel right there. So good. So good. Love it. Love this. Commandy knows. And, that. and, and, and the uh, uh, kind of the, the, the comparison between his like human face and then this human face yeah humanoid a uh, face it's a human face i i guess <laughs> it's uh it's coming out he's got sugar. whoa here we go then things Root happen so man. swiftly that commandy has little time to think diggers they're clawing their way into this chamber from all directions they've got the basket chick 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 what is it chick 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 these diggers are dwarves. Their hides are as hard as the rock they dig. Don't be too eager to accept this gift, fella. It could be poison. Chitch, chitch. Bombs. The, the apes have sent me down there with bombs. Hey, stop. Don't chew on that, chump. <laughs> Those little ignoramuses. They'll blow us all up. No, no, you mustn't do that. Get rid of them, fellas. They're bad. See? Bad, bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh my gosh, they know the word. Yes, I said they're bad, bad. Yeah. Meanwhile, look at um, Commandy's face. Look at that. Wow, yeah. That is really like wild. Yeah, the big screaming, you know, mouth. Meanwhile, on the surface, the gorillas brace themselves for the expected underground explosion. Steady, it should happen any second now. You're a genius, Sarge, a genius among apes. But suddenly, the 
Behind the unsuspecting <laughs> apes, a hole appears, and from out of it come, from out of it come, should be comes, blow a dagnabbit, blow, come on bombs, and then, bleow, <laughs> these guys get a little taste of their own. The ensuing blast is fell deep in the tunnels below. Wow, that was a narrow squeak. From a newly dug tunnel, the gopher people returned to Commandy. The clever little rascals, they knew what to do. Good, good. Good, good. Bad and good, they're the only two words they know. It's all they have left of the English language. Good, good, good. If you mean me, fellas, I thank you very much. Suddenly, bad, bad. <laughs> Gas. The gorillas are releasing poison gas. Bad. Before command can act, he is pulled into a bank of loosened earth. Then he finds himself in an adjoining chamber. The wall of earth is quickly shored up to keep the gas out as command is hustled away to safety. I love this part. Mm. Good, good, good. Easy, fellas. Don't push so hard. I'll go along. Command is taken deep into the tunnels of his captors. Then, the ruins of an old factory, buried by the great disaster. I think we're at the last page here. Mm -hmm. Inside the factory, Command finds the ancient mach machinery still being run. This is amazing. Fweep, fweep. Is this the persisting memory of a once industrial Midwest area still alive in these changed humans? Or perhaps this thing has a purpose I've yet to grasp. I wonder what it could be. I wonder. Commandy will find out real fast, and so will you. Coming, the Eater. So, yeah, so this was, you know, this was just kind of a setup issue, really. Uh, we're introducing. You know, a, a new area, uh, Ohio, and we're introducing a new concept, the Gopher Mounds of Ohio or whatever, the Gopher people. Um, this is a little different, right? Uh, up till now, we've seen animals and anthropomorphic animals. And, uh, you know, maybe only the misfit was like kind of like, you know, a, a creature that was created during the great disaster. But now we're seeing mutations. Yeah, now we're seeing a different type of creature that are mutated. They're not really gopherish. They're just small and they have claws. It looks like metal claws. So, um, really interesting. Um, and we're going to find out, I guess, what they're building, what they're making. Um, we don't know yet, but uh, we'll find out. So, in in my issue here, the very last page is a letter. From Jack Kirby, a full page letter from Jack Kirby. Oh boy. And it says Subject, animals that stand erect. Usurper in residence, Jack Kirby. Reason, con continuous drum beating by maudlin partisans of specific species such as horses, cows, chickens, and wombats. So that's the, that's the weirdest title I've ever heard. So it begins, yes, dear readers, I do peruse the letters we receive, and I must say that between the compliments and brickbats, there runs an insidious and recurrent allusion to my faulty views on the equality of animals. I find this shocking, of course, considering my unabashed surrender to my daughter's concern for all organic life and ecological balance. Believe me when I say that this kind of icky reformation is a bitter pill for one who must now politely doff his hat to a passing scorpion or run to the aid of an ant who is stupidly en route to drowning. <laughs> then why in the world of Commandy do I discriminate against the animals, giving some the intelligence of man and others less sentient awareness? Why must the stately horse still serve as transportation for a smelly old gorilla? And why must the bird remain a beautiful dum-dum? And my answer must be that they don't have to. My personal theory is all animals have a common link. Thus, if given time and proper circumstance, it is possible for all species to achieve the status or near status of man. However, that's a sweeping generalization, and I can easily be assailed from any quarter by equal counter logic. <laughs> Still, I base my commandy premise on a variety of authoritative articles written by qualified men 
who have speculated on the form life must take in order to acquire intelligence as we know it. Their conclusions are that skeletal structure dic dictates this phenomenon, and the ability to stand erect is a sort of first rung on the IQ ladder. I bought that. I ruminated on its possibilities and strung it all out in the world of commanding. It's my job, and it's fascinating to work out this logic in graphic terms. Think of all the animals that can stand erect and walk like a man, and you'll come up with the same characters I have. Think of time and mutational changes that can further enhance the beastly foot and spine so that adaption to erectness becomes permanent. Who but the lowly ape, the dog, the cat, the rat, and its cousins are more likely candidates for making an effortless transition? There is left field, of course. There's always something going on out there. Destiny holds continual surprises, and to be frank, I'm not eagerly awaiting any. To my mind, the hooved animals and our feathered friends would have to undergo changes too extreme in nature to, in order to reach a civilized statehood. It would pain me to know that a wonderful animal like the horse had endured a millennium of backaches in order to sit in a chair and drink his coffee at the TV set. I would crack up and roll on the floor if a sincere and intelligent turkey were to run for Congress. This reaction would occur despite the fact that he'd probably get my vote. No, dear friends, I'm attempting to portray my animal people as logically and objectively as I can. In a few instances, I will dabble with variations such as Clicklack, the giant insect who has broken the biological size barrier. With that premise in mind, I visualized him with less legs and a more herd-like instinct like the horse. As for old man Sacker, the snake, he was part possibility and part satire. He will be followed by new variations. The aim is to maintain your interest and to slug it out with your pugnacious combativeness. Keep reading, keep writing, keep nitpicking. There's no harm in proving that the human brain works. Signed, Jack Kirby. And then there's a picture of uh, Tufton and then a, uh, and then a PS. PS, this is just a passing thought on the meaning of Commandy's world. In developing my animal characters, I find myself relating to them with astonishing ease. Once they have acquired human qualities and names, they become real people, friends and enemies, some to be scorned and others to be respected. It seems to me that all of us have been doing this for centuries, forgetting that these creatures are merely animals, from the largest to the smallest. They seek only to survive as best they can. In the scale of things, they are as important to our well-being as we can be to theirs. Let's not make them the commandies of our world. And if you feel like arguing this point, my address is Box 336, Newbury Park, California. So that was in lieu of a letters column this month, a, uh, a long letter from Jack Kirby. The first we've seen um, shows us a little bit of his writing style, which is very interesting, and a little bit of his thinking. Um, I mean, to me, that just seemed like a page filler, right? Well, I mean, he... he... You got it. Is it titled Time Capsule? Yeah, no, it's not. It's mm. just, uh, it, it just, uh, it has it's definitely no, fill in that page, has no title. And then in, in all caps at the top in the same size print, it says subject animals that stand erect, dot, dot, dot. Mm, okay. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know, I guess just responding, you know, he just, you know, they said, hey, we don't, we, you know, would you rather, uh, pencil a page or would you rather just uh you know pick out a you know some some uh fan mail and respond to it in a typed page and then but it's smart because you want to keep the people uh critiquing him you know he wants the critiques i mean that's really he, he establishes that everybody's kind of berating him and 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 this hierarchy or lack of hierarchy or understanding of the hierarchy between human and animals and the intelligence of the now human-like animals and then at the end says you know keep it coming it yeah but he me. says you know he he says it's nitpicky right keep nitpicking yeah. i mean he's he's perfectly fine with people that read his comics and want to complain about it because at least they're buying them right hell yeah <laughs> so hell that yeah. was commandy 17 a setup issue we're going to see what the gophers are building and um 
you know, we uh, we'll see if if they're uh, you know have any bigger plans besides just uh, you know living down in the ground. Yeah. With the uh, with the apes up above, um, yeah, not not too much in that issue as far as subplots, other characters. You know, they they just had one little cutaway scene to the leopards. You know, and they he was showing that the leopards you know uh, cared about humanity that they. The, you mean the tigers. The tigers, sorry. Um, that you know, his his uh, prince sultan friend was uh, was willing. Tufton. Oh right, Tuf- Tuf- Sultan was a lion, so Tufton is. Yeah, a- yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember the T and the T. So um, <laughs> Prince Tufton was uh, was 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 looking for him, and you know they're mourning him. You know, and and Doctor Canis is saying, "Well, if he's dead, I hope it was a quick death." You know. Painless. Painless. So, um, so that, yeah, that's it. You know, that this is yeah. not a very special, um, not a very special edition, but, uh, you know, an interesting one because of the change in inking and, um, you know, just, the um, the advancing to an, a new area and a new animal. I wonder space. if this was uh, made during the holidays. So people were, you know, Royer was taking time off and, uh, Guy who does time capsule, uh, Steve Sherman took off. Yeah. So you know, and then and then uh, you know, Roz is playing uh, D. Bruce Barry, and, uh-huh. and they're just getting they're just getting an issue out. You know, just just filling filling yeah, the this, issue. This one had had you know maybe a little bit more than than usual of um, no background panels. Um, yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you how much uh, the penciler uh, uh, de- depended on the inker to fill in. I think that's what this il- this uh, issue really illustrates. Yeah, I mean, I think you know from the first page, you know, with like a little empty space, and then this, and then the two page spread being really just a blow up of a huge, you know, panel. You know, just yeah. that uh, you know that maybe this this one was. Um, you know, kind of like uh, rushed out a little bit. So that happens too. Yeah, man. So, uh, so that's good. Yeah. I'm good with that. You got anything else? No, this was a, this was a quickie, but um, it's going to set up our next edition where we can already see there's a giant worm. Um, That looks familiar. Like maybe from, from, is that from Dune or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. From- yeah, so he might be getting into Dune a little bit here. Um, you know, there was always there was also something like that on in Star Wars when the Millennium Falcon just barely escaped. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, some more concepts are on the way when we do Commandy eighteen, and we're going to learn all about the Eater. Cool. All right then. Well then, till next week, Jake. Yep. Yeah. See you, Kurt. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye bye.